dissect the speech and analyze it and learn and give these ideas for improvement. So take notes, learn from today's contest. Humorous contest has also helped me because nothing, nothing connects like humor. And when you add a sexy accent to it, <laughs> at this point, I would like to acknowledge the dignitaries in the room today. And we would start with our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Donna West. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Ethel Goldfein. <laughs> Central North Division Governor, Charles Chapman. Southwest Division Governor, Valerie Fuson. <laughs> North Division Governor, Lydia Sawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Area 22 Governor, Amy Segami. <laughs> Area 31 Governor, Marty Barton. Area 32 Governor, Chris Kostakis. Area 35 Governor, Kim Savi. Area 36 Governor, Renee Tabor. Area 73 Governor, Keith Barton. Area 75 Governor, Amy Archer. <laughs> Are there any other dignitaries who have not been mentioned up to now? Please stand up and be acknowledged. <laughs> moving on, moving on. We will first start with the evaluation contest, take a 10 minute break, and then reconvene <coughs> for the humor speech contest. Both contests we provide tremendous learning opportunity for all of us. So let's sustain that learning environment. Please take a minute to turn off or silence any devices that make noise. It's really appreciated. Let's give our contestants the best environment to perform. Contestants, timers, power counters, and surgeon at arms have all been briefed and know the rules that govern the contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so in the minute of silence if time permits. With that said, let the contest begin! Here is the speaking order for the evaluation contest. Contestant number one, Garrett Gray. Garrett Gray, contestant number one. Contestant number two, Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan, contestant number two. 
Contestant number three, Ruth Princess. Ruth Princess, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Dan Siler. And it's spelled S E I L E R. There's a typo on your agenda. Dan Siler, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Carol Henry. Carol Henry, contestant number five. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them. Odd Wilkins, follow your heart, don't give up. Follow your heart. Don't give up, Odd Wilkins. Be the change you wish to see in the world. That quote by Gandhi has a great meaning to me. I've always wanted to help others in my life and in my work. Three years ago, I found my calling and decided to work hard into making a career change and one day become a humanitarian aid worker. Mr. Toastmaster, honored guests and fellow Toastmasters, my journey started when I attended a talk given by Daniel Wordsworth, the CEO of the American Refugee Committee International, which we call ARC. ARC is a disaster relief organization. They are based in Minneapolis and they help refugees and displaced people due to wars or natural disasters in countries like Sudan, Darfur, Pakistan, Thailand, and more. Daniel was talking about what they did in Haiti in the aftermath of the 2010 earthquake. I was mesmerized by the work a small group of aid workers could accomplish in such a short amount of time. Finding safe grounds, building latrines, setting up tents for shelters, also routing trucks for food and water, working with other organizations. It was very inspiring. Listening to the details, I wanted to be there, comforting people, and distributing life-saving supplies. At the end of the talk, I went to introduce myself to Daniel. I was nervous, like today. And I said, hi, my name is Ode. I am French, and in five years, I will be working for you. <laughs> I believe he was surprised, but he put me in contact with the staff at ARC in Minneapolis. For the last three years, I've been a committed volunteer for the organization in Chicago. Of course, at first, I did my research. When was it created? What countries are they in? What's the budget? And how much goes to programs? What organizations do they partner with? I also had a lot of reading to do about different cultures, which I love learning about, and just learning about issues related to refugees, like maternal health, disease, lack of water. My first year, I booked speaking engagement for the staff to come to me from, from Minneapolis to Chicago and talk about maternal health. Then, afterwards, I went to visit their headquarters. I wanted to know more. And I sat with the staff to try to see how I could help with projects. One of their directors told me, hey, you are part of the team, but now you should do the speaking in Chicago. Me? Oh no, I am afraid of public speaking. I have an accent, no one will understand me. So, after that, you know why I joined Toastmasters, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, f the first year was really, really a learning experience for me. Since then, I've given talks to schools, senior centers, rotary clubs. I always hide behind my notebook, and my PowerPoint presentation. 
but the experience is so rewarding. I love learning more about the kids and learning more about what questions they have, the interest, inspiring them to get involved for a cause they care about. It doesn't have to be about refugees. There are so many hopeful stories of humanity to share. For me, I love speaking about the hope and relief you can bring to refugees. Imagine 55,000 people who've left everything behind going to a refugee camp. All they need is basic, basic rights, like food, water, and shelter. Something I take for granted every day. Now, when I speak to children about the famine in a different country, for example, I will always talk about hunger in America first, what's happening here in our community. I give them facts and ways to help here. One in seven people in Illinois is going to bed hungry every night. One in eight people in the world is food insecure. For me, the pain of a child is global. I care about it here, I care about it happening in the world because there are no borders. So why? Why such an interest for refugees, you may ask? Well, it's from a personal story. My parents were born in North Africa. And when they were teenagers, there was a civil war. They had to leave everything behind and move to relocate to France. <coughs> of course, their hardship was not as bad as the one you would see in the Congo, Somalia, Darfur, like where ARC works. But the fear of losing everything and the fear of the unknown was the same. My parents inspired me. My goal is to work for a nonprofit organization and one day help relocate refugees back to their home country as long as it is safe. When you have a dream or you get inspired, follow your heart, don't give up and face your fears. You may discover something in yourself you didn't know you had in you, like me, public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that my volunteer experience, my skills, my passion, and my training with Toastmasters will help me become a humanitarian aid worker. Thank you. our evaluation contestants five minutes to prepare the evaluations. Mr. Surgeon at Arms, will you please escort the contestants in the other room and time five minutes from the moment they are seated in the other room. At the end of five minutes, please bring back the first contestant. Timers will be please time five minutes. While the contestants complete their evaluations, we would get to know our target speaker. Please help me welcome back to the stage Ord Wilkins. So Ord, how long have you been in Toastmasters? Since May. Since May. Yes, this is my Let's give her a round. Yeah. Oh. Exactly that speech. I think it's the most personal one. Um, that's the, something I've been working on for three years, and I'm very passionate about it. So I think it was um, the one I wanted to show the most about myself, getting to learn more about myself too. What club do you belong to? Long Grove Lake Zurich. Are there any members from there? Oh, there! Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs>
so they're wearing many hats. So those of you who are lagging behind on the menus, he's a <laughs> for One speech a month. That's all it takes. What are your hobbies? Share with us one of your best next hobbies. Oh, my the best time for me is hanging out with my daughters. I have two daughters. One is a freshman in high school and she's 14. And one is 11 years old. So love hanging out with family. I like um, seeing friends. I, I don't have any family here. They are all in France, where where I come from. So it's mainly my friends that have become my family. I moved here um, 16 years ago to learn English. Wow. I could relate to that. <laughs> 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 we have the accent. Yes, yes, yes. So who or what encouraged you to be a target speaker today? I went to a class about public speaking at a library across my house and he was part of the Toastmaster Club and I didn't know anything about it so I just googled it and I, it seemed interesting so I asked to attend one time the club and I'm like well I gotta face my fear of public speaking I gotta go for it so I just applied. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> and you should do a wonderful job. Yeah. 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 You mentioned in your speech that you were hiding behind notes in the lectern, just yes. like I'm doing right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but you didn't hide behind notes or lectern. You were very free, very relaxed. How did you feel during that speech today? I felt good. Um, I didn't have any, you know, I, I didn't stop. I just went on. Usually when I give a talk to children, it's usually 20 to 30 minutes. But I have pictures of different uh, beautiful pictures of children in refugee camps and the, the good ARC is doing. So I'm always very enthusiastic and, and I can have a podium where I read notes. But today was very different, but um, I loved it. I'm getting more comfortable. Excellent. What's the most rewarding part of that experience? Getting um, the constructive criticism because I just have to get better. Yeah, and that's really cool. Yeah. And don't worry, you'll get six. <laughs> 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 so I'd say get your notes in your bag and start accepting this. That's a beautiful title. Follow your heart, don't give up. Mm -hmm. What inspired the title? I've always, since I've been in the U.S., just adapting to this country with the language, trying to find work. That wasn't an easy thing for me. And then I was, I've been working in the same job for 12 years and at a certain point you think you have a lot of potential but it's not being used. And I decided to be like, okay, I can do, make a career change. I found a passion, I know I can be good at it. I'm gonna follow my heart and I won't give up because it's hard. Sometimes even friends will tell me, why do you care so much about refugees? <laughs> we live in America, we're fine here. But I do care and I think you know, if nobody cared, nothing, people would be dying. So I believe I'm going for the good. Yes. <laughs> and as you go through this journey here, you'll feel the caring of people in those masters. It's a wonderful experience. Yeah. Supporters all around you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Do you go often back to France? Or does your work keep you busy and you stay for many mistakes? Well, I, um, my daughters go back more often than me. Sometimes it's easier instead of paying for summer camps here, you pay for a flight ticket. <laughs> they go to grandpa and grandma's, <laughs> my cousins. So it's easier to just send them for a month and then they get the language, they get the culture. It's different too. So it's really good for them. I just went back with my daughters in July because I, after, I hadn't been back in two, three years. So it's, it's good to see family. I, I need that. We're very close, so it's a need. Excellent. Now let me ask this. Is there any temptation when you go back to France to just visit a Toastmasters club in France? <laughs> you know what? I should do that. I never thought that. That would be great. Yes, I should do that. I should look for it. Are you aware that we have a Francophone speakers Toastmasters club in Chicago? Okay. Yeah. We have a member on the back. Please stand up. Tell her a few words. Tell her a few words. <laughs> Afterwards, the address so that with, you may with, get a member and then the commission you can. And this school as well. And this school. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, oh, before you leave, before you leave, we're going to pray. Thank you.
evaluation contestant. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, <coughs> please signal me with the green light when this one minute of silence is up. After all contestants have spoken, please remain silent until the judges have completed their ballots and submitted them. We will now begin the evaluation speech contest. Contestant number one, Garrett Gray. Garrett Gray, contestant number one. <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Owen, it was a great speech. I didn't see any fear of speaking in your voice or your demeanor. Well done. Now today I'm going to talk about three things I really liked about your speech. I'm also going to talk about three areas of growth for future speeches. And last, I'm going to talk about one thing I absolutely loved about your speech. Number one, I liked your humor. That little injection of humor about your fear of speaking and whatnot, it works connected with the audience and loosened them up. Number two, you were well prepared. You had great eye contact with Alpha throughout the whole audience. And it showed your preparation, and most importantly, that gives you a connection, that eye contact. Number three, your manner. You had the three C's. You were caring, competent, and you had compassion. Like I said, I don't see you hiding behind some notebook or a PowerPoint presentation. Now there's three areas of possible growth in the future. Number one, your staging. I felt that you paced back and forth a little too much. I think it would be more effective if you piecemeal your talk, the intro, and then you progress through the stages of your speech. <coughs> Number two, gestures. You used your hands, but they weren't very effective in terms of conveying your message. There was one part where you were talking, somebody told you, you be part of the team. Point, you be part of the team. Get everybody involved in the audience. I think if you increase the gestures, stop the pacing, you'll increase your connection, make it even more powerful. Last, the conclusion. I think it could be stronger. The definitive call to action to the people in the audience. Bring it back to that famous Gandhi quote. Say, you can be the change you wish to see. Very powerful. Very good call to action. Last, the one thing I absolutely love about your speech is the message. <coughs> there are no borders. Pain is global. And the world does get changed by people who have the compassion and caring that you show by your action. Well done. In conclusion, Three things I liked about your speech. The humor. You were very well prepared, good eye contact. And last, your overall manner. Areas of growth, stop the pacing. Increase your gestures, make it more effective. And three, make a powerful conclusion. And last, I loved your message. Well done.
Contestant number two, Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan, contestant number two. Oh, great speech. It was a great job for you to come here and share with us your story about changing your career and really, uh, I thought you had two purposes to educate us about how you went about doing it and educating us about humanitarian effort and also to motivate us to kind of follow our desires and our hearts and, and, and find those things we truly love to do and find a way to make those more important in our lives. I thought I want to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about content and then presentation. The content. Right up front, you set a bold goal for yourself, and I thought this was a great thing. You, you went up to the president of this organization, I don't know if he's a president, but a leader, and said, five years, I'm in. Uh, it's really set a, you know, a bold goal, and, and then you told us about how you went about getting there. I thought that was a great feature. Um, I thought it was, uh, in your explanation of some of the things people do in the humanitarian effort was very interesting and things I didn't know but they're very simple things often uh, but defective and, and things we take for granted and that really drives down deep that maybe it's not so hard to help and you don't have to do very difficult things, just simple things and, and get those in front of people. It's a great part of your story. And then coming into your conclusion, I thought you had a great line helping people work through the fear of the unknown. I thought that was a fantastic line. It was kind of working into your conclusion. If I wanted to talk about a couple things you can improve there, I thought you could highlight your goal more clearly because it was such a great goal and uh, really play that up. And then I thought that line, that I, the last line I mentioned about helping people through the fear of the unknown was fabulous, and I thought you could feature that more prominently. Just two things you can work up to the top of your speech and really uh, dig in from there. I want to talk a little bit about presentation. You have a very engaging presence. I like the way you use the stage. You uh, have a nice smile and, and really make the audience warm. You have a warmth around you, and it really helps your message. The only thing I would uh, sometimes I would watch you when you walk away from the audience. Sometimes you have a tendency to speak towards the back of the room. I would, that's okay, but before you start speaking, you can turn and face us again. Uh, the um, all in all, I think you met your goals, easily met your goals. It was very, uh, very interesting to learn, and it really motivates me to explore ways maybe I can help too. Thank you very much. Contestant number three, Ruth Princess. Ruth Princess, contestant number three. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, 
honored guests, and especially Ode. What a wonderful, inspiring speech. I want to tell you about things that I thought were really good about it and the ways that you can make it even better for the next time. First off, what I liked was your voice. You have an accent, and yet you were very understandable. Your pace was excellent. And I also liked the fact that you mentioned the French and the accent that added some humor. So that was really great. You didn't sound nervous at all in your voice. Your only nerves were in your pacing, but <coughs> that's fine because your voice was calm. And so that's the most important aspect. And so you did a great job with that. And you also had a wonderful connection. I'm sure you didn't know I was one of the evaluators, but you used me as an example. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> Some of the things that I think will help you in the future, these might be a little more advanced for you with your Toastmasters career, and I commend you for being in Toastmasters because I'm sure this is an obvious improvement because you did such a wonderful job. <coughs> Everyone responded. Project 9 and 10 will help you a lot because you are working on inspirational and motivational. And I think the one thing that would help all of us follow your goal and mission of helping out would be to touch us emotionally. And that might seem really hard and really advanced to try and do, but think about just one little thing you said, the earthquake. Have you ever been in an earthquake? Have you just dropped a cup and it shattered into pieces? Imagine your whole life dropping like a cup and shattering into pieces. Your goal with your speech is to bring emotion to the audience. And then, at the end, ask them for a call to action. How are you going to help? Maybe you don't know how. Here is what I would recommend. If you want to help these people go to bed hungry. It's the last time you went to bed hungry. And use your voice to portray that emotion and use your stories to help accomplish your goal. So in conclusion, keep doing what you're doing. Don't change your style. The style is great. Just work on your emotional stories, because I know you have plenty, and you're going to do a fantastic job with all your future speeches. Minute of silence, please. Contestant number four, Dan Silo. Dan Silo, contestant number four. These are Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and especially Ood. What a great speech and what a great story, too. 
on your quest to become an humanitarian aid worker. This speech, the evaluation speech, will focus on three things. Your strengths, your opportunities for growth, and your overall impression that your speech had on me. Let's first talk to talk about your, your, your strengths. Your, um, your, uh, your ability to come up here to own your content. This was your story. This was your, your whole, ex your whole exper exper experience. Instead of just talking about your, your stories, you own the content and you've brought that passion and enthusiasm to, this, to, this, to, to your speech. One of the things I want to talk, talk to you about though is during your introduction, your, um, you said the quote first and then you said Gandhi. And I was sitting in the back of the room, I really didn't hear that quote, but when you said the word Gandhi, or the name Gandhi, it perked up. So one of the ways to make that introduction even more, more, more powerful is to use who you got the quote from first. Gandhi, and then go right into your, into your quote and then on to, and then into the rest of your story. I noticed up here you were pacing backwards and forth, and you could tell you're a little bit nervous. But I tend to use tend to suggest people to take that energy and use it into your voice, into your gestures. And don't and, and don't be afraid to walk up to a certain person in the audience, deliver your the end of your thought, and then to walk back. It seems to give more strength to the space that you occupy. And then I would also like to, to talk a little bit about your personal story to North Africa. And, 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 and that story I thought was really great, especially when you contrast that to, it's not like going to the, the Congo. So it was a great way to, to, to contrast story. So my, my conclusion is take care of the, of, of the space, use the, the power and the strength of the quote with the name, and enjoy it. Ms. Children. Contestant number five, Carol Henry. Carol Henry, contestant number five. My fellow Toastmasters, and any would be Toastmasters in the mm -hmm. audience, to our special guests, and to all. Uh, what a fantastic speech. That was such a great opening. I want to help others. Well, guess what? You captivated the audience. I could see it on your faces. I could hear it in your words. <clears throat> I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do something. And I'm going to go to those countries and help those people who've been displaced. Well, you not only captured my attention, you held it. Because you would tell your story. <coughs> and as it unfolded, I got to see more into Auden. I got to see more about 
the relationship that you had and the feelings that you had for other people. I got to see how positive and confident you were, your directness, good use of humor, wonderful eye contact, and I especially like the fact that as you would walk, you were using it to get your next statement together. Good gestures. Good use of the stage area. As I said, there was an instant connection. However, what I would love to have seen was for you to walk to one side of the stage, tell your story, <coughs> stand here as opposed to a pace. I would have loved to have heard just a little bit more vocal variety. A little louder, a little softer. At one point in time, I noted that you had your fingers clasped like this. Let's see. Okay, that's all right. I, I, I'm one of these people who does like this, so it makes a big difference. But when you're here, maybe it might be easier if you do it here. And when you want to do your gesture for, like, the world, make it big. Make it grand. Get out there. Let us see. You did point to the children in the other country as this. <laughs> okay. I caught that one. That was good. That was good. All in all, I have to admit, this was on target and well done. Thank you so very, very much. And I appreciate it. Toastmaster, we've collected all the ballots. Thank you very much. Now we will hear an exciting announcement from our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Donna West.
How many of you have seen this brochure? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well this is actually the new improved version, and I'll tell you about it. And this is my last set for the division contest, so please take them at the break from me, take them to your clubs, whatever. What I'm talking about is the fall conference, two weeks from today. <laughs> There's a lot for us still to do. <laughs> anyway, the winners today will be competing at the fall conference. And this is why you should go. How many people have been to a conference before? Okay, there's still a lot of you that don't have your hand up. It's not far from here. It's in Willowbrook. <laughs> First of all, we have the 2002 World Champion of Public Speaking, Dwayne Smith. He'll be speaking at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, we'll also have our World Champion of Public Speaking for this year. They're speaking at a couple of times. Starts out at 7 a.m. I mean, Saturday morning, God, I got here in like 20 minutes when there was no traffic. <laughs> 7 a.m. is the Achievers Breakfast. Anyone who has earned a CC, a CL, or any of the educational awards, you get a free hot breakfast. Yeah. It's worth getting up early and going, right? Yeah. And you'll hear Dwayne speaking for the first time. Then we have the banner parade. I don't know how many of you have competed. You bring your banner, get some people from your club, you get a 15 second skit together. And what does the winner get? <coughs> Free club registration. Free club registration for the spring conference. How can you beat that, right? 9 a.m. evaluation contest. Whoever wins today, right, we'll be there. 10.30, we have the business meeting. Now for people, that don't need to attend the business meeting. I mean, it is exciting, but you can't attend. There are, two <laughs> there are two educational sessions. The first one is Improve with Improv with Ellen Schnur. So that another way to improve your presentation skills. And then right after that, we have Prez, our world champion, telling us how he made the journey to world champion of public speaking. Yay! Now we have lunch, and we have our Wayne Smith speaking again. Then right after that, we have the red carpet ceremony. Every single club that made distinguished, select distinguished, or present distinguished, gets to walk the red carpet, get a trophy, and get your picture taken by a, a professional pro photographer. So there's over 125 clubs that made distinguished last year. That's wow. wow. We also have club ambassador. We have uh, triple crown and a few others. Toastmaster of the Year, etc. So that's all going on with the red carpet. Then after that, we have dinner, DTM ceremony. I know there's some people in the room that are getting their DTMs. And then, what I'm most proud of it, I have added karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> so after dinner, we are going to have karaoke. And this is what is really funny. First, we're going to have uh, Robert Kleiner, who actually Sounds like a comedian. He actually looks like Billy Crystal. Good. He's going to kick it off with 10 minutes of comedy, get us in the mood. And then Ethel and I and a couple other gals are going to get up and do, Stop! <laughs> I can't say it. So, so now we're really going to laugh. Yeah. My adult children say, Mom, when you go to karaoke, you want to hear the people that are really bad because they're the funnier ones. You don't want to hear the people that can sing. I said, Thanks a lot. So anyway, you get all of this for a while. The price just went up. $109 for your entire club, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors, your you know, co-workers, whoever can all go for $109 for this entire day from 7 in the morning till 9 at night with karaoke. I mean, where can you get a value like that? Now, meals are extra, but you get all of that fun. I have brochures here. And on the back, it gives you some songs you can start practicing. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope to see you all there. We we'll hear one more announcement from our videographer, Tim Bolger. Just a brief announcement that what you have seen here will be posted on YouTube mm -hmm. probably in the next couple of days. We've taped, and, and anybody who does not want to be taped or brought, posted, please let me know before the end of the session so I, when I do post it, I can edit you out. After 
I have gotten permission from our district governor to post all eight division contests after the last one occurs. So if you're interested in seeing them, you just go to www.timsvideo.com. I have cards for what's going on. And again, if for some reason you do not want to be taped or put on that thing, let me know and I will not put you up or broadcast. Thank you very much. Let's take a 10-minute break. The refreshments are in the back. Bathrooms are to the left and right of the exit.